Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena. This week it's time for us to slide back into DIY mode for a little bit to increase the comfort in our cockpit and then we'll get back to sailing. We're gonna make little beanbag chairs for the cockpit. You may think that's a wacky idea, but a little while back we met Nigel and Joe aboard Witchcraft and they had made tiny beanbag chairs for their cockpit and it seemed very comfortable. So we're shamelessly gonna steal their idea and make some for ourselves. And actually, the shameless stealing of the idea is not even the worst part because Nigel and Joe actually gave us the pattern for these bean bags. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, get to bean bag making. My name is Mess. This is my wife, Ava. I've spent the last five years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That was a DIY fun packed adventure, complete with a very extensive osmosis treatment, building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, rebuilding the entire deck, gutting, and subsequently rebuilding most of the interior painting the top sides and a ton of other projects. The summer of 2021, we started cruising full time. Now we're finally ready to begin our adventure. This week started out with a short, although be it slightly bumpy 25 mile sail to get us to Rio de Rosa. We're right now anchored next to the tiny fishing village of, <clears throat> and I'm sure I'm butchering this, Puerto de Palmeria. Next to us here in the Anchorage, we've got our friends Zach and Becca aboard Tailey. We might head out and check out a waterfall a little bit later with them just to get a break from all the DIY fun. About four months ago, we picked up two of these comfort seat folding chairs for the cockpit. These are a lot nicer quality than the old folding chairs we've had, and they're good, they're just not super awesome. The comfort seats are fairly comfortable, especially if you're only sitting in them for a few hours. But on longer passages where our butts have been in the seats for well, hours upon hours upon hours, we have suffered a few cases of sore bum. Hopefully being able to switch between the comfort seat and the beanbag chair is really gonna bump up the comfort level in the cockpit. We should have everything we need here. We've got our trusty sail ride. We've got two big bags of stuffing balls. We've got two different types of material. We've got an outdoor fabric and some boat canvas. Now the boat canvas does seem a little bit stiff right now, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna loosen up over time. And of course, we also have the ever important pattern. And Ava's gonna see if she can digitize this pattern so we can put it up on our website. Check the uh, link down in the description. We were a little bit limited when it came to colors and this outdoor material here. So uh, yeah, as you can see, we have gone with black. The canvas is a dark blue because all of our canvas is dark blue and this is something we had left over from some other projects. So both of our bean bags are going to be pretty dark in color. Now Nigel and Joe did something really cool with the bean bags on their boat. They had used really bright colors and they'd found some reflective tape to sew on there so that they could use their bean bag chairs as emergency flotation devices. I think that's a really cool idea and also the bright colors were a little bit more interesting than just our boring dark colors. Alas, bum comfort is more important than color. So yeah, we'll go with the black and the dark blue. There are a few different parts to this pattern. First off, the big one here is the base. Then we have the side. There's gonna be six of these going around. Then we have the top. And this is also gonna be the little vent thingy that's gonna be at the bottom, but we'll get back to that later. And then finally, there is a handle. I now have all of the pieces of the puzzle. So all that remains is just to sew all of this together. And I think we're gonna start with the mesh material here on the bottom. 
I believe there are a couple of reasons for the mesh here. Joe mentioned that she put the mesh on the bottom to be able to clean out the balls inside of the beanbag chair, but also this will let water out and I'm sure if this wasn't here eventually water would find its way in and just it'll be a very damp environment in there. So I think the mesh is very important. I've set up the sail right and I've made a little test with some of the scrap pieces just to make sure that my tension is roughly right and also just to see what sewing in that mesh material is like. In our little attempt at industrial espionage here to get the pattern for the beanbag chair, we forgot to ask them how they got the balls inside of the beanbag. So yeah, I don't know if there's a clever way of doing this, but yeah, we can always just leave a little hole open at the bottom, pour it in there and then stitch that up afterwards. Let's uh, see how it goes. I don't know if this is gonna come back and bite me in the behind later, but I've started by sewing the mesh onto the bottom and then sewing all of the sides onto the top. After yet more oh glorious sewing, all of the sides are now joined together and this thing is basically a giant lamp shade inside out. All that remains now is to get the top sewn to the uh, lampshade and of course we gotta remember to leave a little gap so we can flip the entire thing inside out and also to add the balls. The bottom is on there now. I've left a small opening here. I'm thinking, seeing it now, that it may be a little bit too small. It's probably gonna be difficult to flip the thing inside out with this small opening, but uh, let's give it a whirl. So far, so good. Uh, if you're gonna be making one of these, I would definitely make the opening here maybe just a little bit wider. I am at 15 centimeters or six inches. So maybe just go a little bit bigger than that. Much like the beanbag chairs from my youth, for the inside, we're gonna be using polystyrene balls. And again, it might've been nice if the opening was just a tiny bit bigger, but uh, the real challenge is we don't know how many of the balls to add. We've added an amount of polystyrene balls that feels reasonable for a beanbag chair. If I was to estimate, I'd say this is probably 160, maybe 170 liters worth of tiny balls. Ta-da! Two tiny beanbag chairs. I have had to make a slight modification. I think I said I added 150, 160 liters of balls, something like that. That was way too much. It was perfect for a flat surface, but out here in the cockpit where there's the cockpit combing, it was way too much. With too many balls inside of the beanbag chair, we end up sitting up very high and actually outside of the cockpit combing. So it's very uncomfortable, but I think this is good. This one over here is the second one I made and I put even less balls inside of that one. And I think it's actually better, but yeah, like I said, we'll give it a bit of time and figure out what works best. Both of them work really well here in the uh, aft end of the cockpit where it's a little bit more like sitting on a flat floor. I am a little bit surprised of how much time went into making these two beanbag chairs. Granted, there was a little bit of trial and error involved, but basically two beanbag chairs equal one day. As you can see, the sun's about to set here behind me and I think tomorrow we'll head out and check out that waterfall with Zach and Becca. <music> Thank <laughs> you.
It is adventure time. And we're off. This reminds me of one of the first times you ever came to LA. Remember we went to hike in Altadena and there's a waterfall there. True. Just rekindling the romance. <laughs> Taylor's a little bit faster than us. They're going as slow as they can before they stall out. We recently lost an oar, so we're, we're one oar in it. Dinghies are securely tied up. Let's head out on an adventure. After much walking, we've made it from uh, down here somewhere all the way up to here. And we should be fairly close to the waterfall now. I can hear it. It's pretty close. It's Russian. Oh, actually, it's Spanish. We're almost finally at the waterfall. For the last couple of minutes, we've been walking through a part of this forest that looks like it's been hit by some kind of wildfire. If you look at the trees here, the bottom section of them are all black and charred. And here on the ground, there's still a bunch of like charred little twigs and other stuff. This stuff is very light, so maybe this fire was this year because I imagine one really good bit of rain and all of this would be washed away. It must have been pretty freaking toasty here to cause all of this charring. Anywho, let's push on. I see a little bridge over there. I think we have to cross that to get to the waterfall. We're there. Out here is the waterfall. They put up this very nice safety railing doodad here to get you down there, except maybe they should have spent a little bit more time securing that thing. I'm no structural engineer, but to me, this looks a little uh, light duty. As the sun started rising the next morning, we wanted to take advantage of the grocery store and the hardware store in town before leaving. So we jumped in the dinghy and headed into the tiny fishing harbor in town. From the look of the fishing gear piled up in the harbor, there appears to still be a lot of small scale fishing going on in Puerto Palmyra. In the inner harbor, there were also many of what looked like very well kept traditional wooden boats. The town is charming and looks like most of the other towns we visited in Spain. For me, one of the major attractions was the hardware store. It felt almost like walking into a marine consignment store in the US, with narrow aisles piled full of all kinds of exciting stuff. We found a bottle opener and headed back to Athena. It is a beautiful, although be it completely windless day. We've got a short bit of motoring to do to our next stop. It's about 25 miles to Cambaro. We're gonna be spending quite a bit of time in this area over the next eh, three or four weeks, something like that. And there's a good reason for that. I haven't mentioned this before, but we are gonna be installing a wind vane and uh, that's gonna get shipped out hopefully the last half of October. I'll go into plenty more detail about the windway and why we've chosen that model once we're ready to install it. But uh, yeah, for now we just need to kind of hang out in Spain or the top part of Portugal for the next three or four weeks, which is not bad at all. The reason we don't want to leave mainland Europe before we've got the wind vane is because shipping to mainland Europe is a lot cheaper than shipping it to the Canary Islands. We could of course head further south along the coast of Portugal, but that's where the Orca hotspot is right now, down by Lisbon. So we definitely don't want to go too far south. And the Rias, this area where we are right now, has tons of great anchorages. So yeah, it's very tempting to just hang out in this area for a little bit. It would of course be nicer if we could sail the 25 miles, but there are some upsides to having to motor. Because the sea state is so calm, we can take care of 
a little bit of food prep and we can also get some much needed juice into our batteries. Well, this thing was a bit of a dot. There's almost no melon. It's all just void. As you can see, the high output alternator is putting out about 3000 watts. So we should be charged up fairly quick. If the price of melon has skyrocketed in Spain over the last few weeks, I'm afraid we might be partially to blame because on most days we'll go through almost an entire melon. A while back, Ava lost her phone overboard, plump, and uh, since then it's become a rule that for her to have anything up on deck, it must be strapped to her. <laughs> well, we better hope that I don't fall in. <laughs> Our batteries are fully charged, so we've turned off the infernal noisemaker, and now we have about four and a half miles to go. It's uh, very light winds, but it's dead downwind. We've got the main all the way over there with a preventer on it, and we've got the headsail pulled out. I did mess up a little bit and forgot to run this sheet underneath the lifeline. We have eight knots of wind, and we're managing a whooping two knots. 2.28, we're freaking zooming. That might not sound super impressive, but Athena is a big old heavy lady and it takes a bit of wind to get her going. So yeah, but at least we're getting there. We made it to Combado. The anchor is set and it's really beautiful here. The town is also supposed to be really nice and one of the nicest fishing towns in this whole region. So we'll probably head in and check it out in the morning and probably stay here around three or four days. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the plan for next week is to continue enjoying Galicia, Gal Glacier, yeah. Glacier, yeah, um, which is this region of Spain. And um, also, I want to see if we can do a couple of DIY projects next week. But mm -hmm. uh, for one of them, I need a stainless guy. We're still looking for that. Yeah. And also for the other one, I need the use of my arm, which is still acting up a little bit. So we'll see. But either way, we hope to see all you guys next week here back aboard Athena for yet more fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See, see you. you.